Hi guys, this video would be a revision video. Also, I'm going to cover what are the main things we have uh, learned from the beginning. So the first thing we have learned is the vector. What's mean by the vector? For that, we have learned about the magnitude as well as the direction. The vector will have these both elements. Also, when we are considering the vector, we we learned about how to draw a vector or how to show a vector in a plane which simply means we need to show the magnitude of that vector also we need to show the direction of the vector so after that we learned about how to denote a vector let's say if i i'm having a vector like a we can denote that symbol like a underscore so this is the vector notation so when we are considering the magnitude of this a vector we need to use this modulus sign so this simply means this is a mod of vector we can directly tell this is a magnitude of this vector so when we are considering this we need to tell this magnitude as well as the direction to denote hold the vector so that's the main thing so after that we have learned about the unit vector what is mean by unit vector is actually we already knew that we are going to have the magnitude as well as the direction for a vector when we are considering a unit vector the magnitude of that unit vector is going to be one so that's the unit vector let's say this is the vector a vector and the magnitude of that vector is a so when we are considering the unit vector the magnitude of that vector let's say the unit vector of this a vector simply means let's say this is the direction of this is the direction of a vector this is the direction of a vector when i'm considering the unit vector it's going to be in this direction if i'm considering the unit vector of this a vector the unit vector is going to have the same direction but the magnitude is going to change it's going to be 1 so let's say this is the unit vector it's going to be 1 so that's the thing but the thing main overall thing is when we are considering about this direction it's going to be the magnitude is going to be 1 another thing is we can directly find the magnitude sorry the we can find the um, unit vector using this a vector 2 the simplest way is we need to write the vector over here and divide it by that magnitude so if we do this we can get the unit vector in this direction so we can use this notation directly so that's the main point over here so after that we have learned about multiplication and addition of the vector for addition we used triangular law so it's not a big deal so i'm not going to show over here after that we have learned about two product methods one is dot product and the cross product so i will touch them later so after that we have learned about properties of vectors so when we are considering the properties of vectors we actually divide into when we are considering a vector in a 2d plane we talked about the unit vector along the directions of i j and sorry in when we are considering the plane we only have these both these i and j but here when we are considering the 3d plane we also use this k direction vector let's say in this direction if i mark it like this is the i vector direction Note that this is a i vector direction but this is a unit vector which simply means it only denote the one unit of this x direction if i consider this like i x axis like i it's going to while it's going to be like this so this is going to be j and if the k axis would be perpendicular to both axis this is going to be k axis but remember this is the unit vector in this direction so that's the so when we are considering about the modulus of a when we are considering about the direct the mod of or whether when we are considering the result of two vectors let's say the a1 and the a2 i'm going to draw like this this is the a1 vector and let's say this is the a2 vector 
if when we are considering these two vectors the modulus of that which simply means the resultant of these two vectors going to be this side in this direction also you can find what's the mod or what's the magnitude of this vector using Peidel's theorem you can easily find that so when we are notating or uh, when we are using the notation for the vectors let's say the a vector is equal to a1 i which simply means in this i unit vector direction the magnitude of that vector is going to be a1 likewise in the j direction it's going to be a2 if i consider this we can directly tell we can directly use a simple notation it's going to be we need to use this plane over here, this coefficient over here a1 comma a2 which simply denotes it's going to be a1 i plus a to j so these are the things we have learned in the first section also also we have learned about ratio formula in the second section we have learned about dot product you need to know the equation first when we are using the dot product for two vectors it will return a magnitude which simply means it's not a vector the resultant would be a scalar quantity it's not a vector so you need to always know that so this is going to be a into b vector into cos theta so we can directly use this formula the theta is an angle between a vector and b vector so when we are considering a vector these vectors when the angle between them are 90 degrees which simply means a and b are normal to each other normal to each other means the angle between these two vectors are 90 in other terms we can also tell like orthogonal vectors a and b are orthogonal vectors when they are orthogonal vectors we can directly tell this cos theta would be 0 because of the theta is going to be 90 so we can directly tell a dot b is going to be 0 so you can directly use this you don't need to use the vector sign over here because we have get us scalar from this one also the condition is when we are dot product when we are using the dot product we can take we can determine that a and b are non-zero vectors so also we have learned about the vector i into i if i take the dot product between i into i you can directly tell it's going to be mod of i into mod of i i'm going to directly substitute in this equation into cos theta is going to be zero as they are in the parallel they are the same so it's going to be in the same direction so when we apply this to this the theta is going to be zero we can directly tell the magnitude of i would be one and this one is also one and the cos zero is also going to be one so we can directly tell it's going to be one totally so when we are using the dot product for any two direction vectors in this i j k or any two direction vectors same direction vector is going to return a value of one so that's the main thing if i do the direct the dot product between two 90 degrees i and j vector it's going to be zero as we have already learned about that when we are considering the properties of dot product it's going to be the first product is if i multiply this a dot b it will return b dot a it's going to be same you can directly substitute it and find that but you don't need to memorize this but these are the techniques or these are the things you need to be aware of so when we are using this one we can also write it like this we can directly multiply this a dot b plus a dot c in the mathematical terms it will known as it will called as distributive law so this you don't need to remember this but these are the basic mathematics terms we used for these laws so after that we have some we have some we have done some calculation regarding what's the unit vector along those directions so these are the things we have learned in the second section after that we have learned about vector product which simply means cross product this is a this is little bit difficult than the single product sorry, or scalar product because when we are considering this the resultant of this product with two products is going to be a vector so when we are writing the value it's going to be a b sine theta 
after that we need to show what's the direction of this because when we are considering these values it's going to be scalar or this is going to be the magnitude as i have already mentioned it's going to be the uh, vector we need to show what's the direction it's going to be normal vector to this a b plane so this is a normal vector so normal it, this simply means when we are denoting this it's going to be unit vector in that normal direction so it's not necessary but you can also mark this like this because it's going to show the direction of this vector so this is the direction of this vector when we are multiplying or when we are doing the cross product with a and b it's going to return a value of magnitude and this is the direction of that vector which simply means let's say this is a and this is b the direction would the cross product vector the resultant vector of that cross product would be perpendicular or normal to this plane but it depend whether it's upside or downwards it depends on the direction if i multiply from a cross b we need to use the right hand rule and find the direction if i change the vector which simply means b cross a the sign would be in the negative direction which simply means it will have in the with the direction of the, those dot cross product going to change so also we have learned about how to use the right hand rule to find that after that we have used a method to easily find the cross product of any two vectors by using ijk method so when let's say this is the vector called f and this is another vector called g let's say this is the magnitude of this vector is the direction vector is a b and c let's denote it like this a b c as i have already mentioned this a is in the i direction b is in the y direction and c is in the z direction likewise g vector let's say this is the vector of g a and f so when i'm considering like this we can directly write use we can directly find the direction the final resultant vector using a using this matrix so when i'm considering this matrix ijk is going to be a b c and d e f just you need to write like this ijk and you need to write in the order first you need to write the f vector and after that you need to write the g vector after that you need to simplify this if you simplify this you will get that resultant direction vector let's say it's going to be i vector into b f minus c minus j vector into a f minus c d and plus k vector into a e minus db so you can always use this from that also you can find this or otherwise you can use a b sin theta it's up to your wish and it's according to your it might the difficulty might change according to that question also so you need to use that relevant method when we are considering the properties of that cross product it's having it's going to have some interesting properties than dot product when i am considering the a cross b and b cross a it's going it's not going to be same because i have already mentioned the direction is going to change when i am considering the direction of a to b cross product it's going to be in the if it's in the upside when i am considering the b to a it's going to be the negative over direction by using the right hand rule you can easily find that so that we need to use that minus sign over here likewise when you are using the direct uh, cross product between any two axes when you substitute over here you can find this the sin theta is going to be zero because the theta is going to be zero when these are parallel or these are the same vector so you can tell this is going to be zero so these are the things you need to know if i multiply any two vectors let's see i j and k it's also going to have something different properties so when we are considering this i'm going to multiply i into j over here if i do so 
I will be getting the direction vector which is perpendicular to these two vectors. So we can directly tell it's going to be k vector. As I have already mentioned when we are doing the cross product for any two vectors, it's going to return a value which is a vector. It's going to have the direction of normal to that plane. If I consider ij plane, it's going to be perpendicular to this ij plane. So if you consider this thing, if I this ij plane, it's the k vector is the perpendicular line. So we can directly tell like that. So these are the points you need to know of properties of cross product. After that we have learned about the moment of force, how to calculate the moment of force. Likewise you can find the work done by that force using this cross product method. So so cross dot not a cross product or this is a dot product method. You need to use some calculation before using that whether you need to use the dot product or cross product to find any answer. So these are the things we have learned about the cross product. So when we are using the cross product, what are the uses of cross product? That's the main thing. For what calculation we need to use that cross product? Normally when we are finding the triangle's area, let's say we are going to find the triangle's area, we can directly use the dot cross product to use that because as we can you can if we draw like this let's say this is the a vector and this is the b vector and this is having a angle like theta so when i am considering this actually we knew when i am considering a area of this triangle we need to use we need to find the length of this height which simply means we need to find this height it's going to be b sine theta and after that we need to multiply the base with that height and into half likewise you can directly tell it's going to be half a into b sine theta so this is the magnitude so in other terms you can directly tell it's going to be we can directly write that for using this a b sine theta we can directly tell it's going to be a cross b so it's going to be half of a cross b likewise you can easily find the area of parallelogram it's going to be a cross b so you can also use that one so when we are after that we have learned about triple scalar product so when we are using the triple scalar product we can first of all we need to know what are the properties of triple scalar product so the triple scalar product simply means it's going to have one dot product and to another cross product so it's the same like dot product because you can easily write it like a cross b dot c would be equal to a dot b cross c so these are the terms you need to know so we use the triple scalar product to find the volume of parallel byte so that's the main thing okay when we are considering the volume of the tetrahedron we can also use this triple scalar product as if the name tells when we are using the triple scalar product we will get the answer in scalar so the main use of triple scalar product is we can use to find the volumes of any items so when you are finding the a volume of any parallel pipe you can directly use the cross product of a dot b cross c let's do that so let's say this is the a vector and this is the b vector and this is the c vector you can directly use a dot b cross c which simply means triple scalar product and find the volume of this when you are considering about the tetrahedron the volume of the tetrahedron you need to multiply this by 1 by 6 into a dot b cross c the main thing over here is you can directly use this equation if you need to find the volume of tetrahedron
After that, we have learned about vector triple product. When we are considering the vector triple product, you don't need to memorize that proofs. However, you need to know the answers to prove any questions. So when we are considering these, as the name tells, it's going to return a vector a cross b cross c so that you can trick you can't trick like the like this let's say you can't directly like write like a cross b into or cross c it's not going to be equal so we have different equation for these and these so that's enough to memorize these two equation a cross b cross c so when we are using that equation we can directly remember like this if any vector is in front of this and other two are having the brackets you need to know one thing you need to use this b vector minus c vector you need to write this first b vector minus c vector after that you need to use dot product of other two vectors let's say you can use for this one you need to use a dot c you can use in the either sides because they are going to give the or a magnitude it's not going to change when you are changing those values you can write it like a dot c or c dot a it's going to split in the same value so let's like like this after that you need to use that here is the c vector so we need to consider a and b so a dot b likewise we can write it for this also when i'm considering this in the bracket there are only two vectors the first one is going to be we need to write the b vector only after that we need to write the another vector a vector you can't change the this one you can't write the a first and minus b it's going to be in the direction the same notation so after that we need to consider other two so here it's going to be a dot c and here it's going to be b dot c so you need to remember, remember this otherwise it's difficult to derive or use those in the calculations so after that we have learned about straight lines about in the 3d plane when we are considering the straight lines you need to know mainly three methods or four methods or four forms of a straight line denoting methods the first one we have learned is parametric equation when we are considering the parametric equation let's say th this is a line and there's a point called x1 y1 z1 and the, they have given the direction vector like this so as this is a point we need to mark like this and they have given this the direction of this line is going to be x2 y2 z so this is the direction of this so when i'm considering this we can track it till the any values of this one let's say this is going to be x1 y1 z1 is going to be the direction vector of this going to be x2 y2 z2 so when i'm considering the parametric equation which simply means we need to find what's the value of x relative to this and what's the value of y and what's the value of z so when I'm considering the value of x, it's going to be x1 plus any parameter. Normally we use this term t, but you can use any parameter. So let's say I'm going to use this is a parameter of the my. So if I'm considering this, I'm going to get t into x2. So which simply means this is a parametric equation of x. Likewise, you need to write for y and z. This is known as parametric equation of a vector over line likewise there are other three methods of denoting methods so the second method is called vector method when you are using the vector method you need to use this formula which simply means first you need to write the coordinates of the point after that you need to write the direction vector so here you need to write the direction vector after that parameter sign in the first or in the beginning we normally write any point in that line here they have already given x1 y1 z1 so i'm going to write like this y1 z1 
after that you need to write the direction vector is going to be x2 y2 z so we can recollect that this is a point vector which simply means it's going to show the point in that line after that we can recollect that the direction of this line is going to be x2 y2 z2 the main thing over here is when you are considering uh, when you are finding the unit vector of this line if they anyone ask about unit vector of this line the thing is we can only find the unit vector for that direction vector we have already learned about that in this video also so we can only find the unit vector in that direction so when we are finding the unit vector we need to use this vector only x2 y2 z2 for that only we can find the unit vector this is a point vector so this is going to denote a point this is going to be denote the direction so when you are considering the unit vector of this line which simply means the direction you need to use this sign this vector so that's the main point after that we have learned about symmetric equation symmetric equation of a line straight line for that you need to use this one x minus x1 over is going to be x2 and this is going to be y minus y1 over y2 and this is going to be z minus z1 over z2 so this is known as symmetric equation you need to use in you need to write it in this manner the main thing is these all are the same vector but we are writing in several methods so all are having different methods of writing so you need to remember the names of this because they will ask or they will mention the name and ask to write these formulas so if they ask the parametric equation you need to write in this method so you need to remember the names of these methods after that there is another method Uh, that's known as so we can also write the symmetric form however we are going to tell as uh, we are going to tell that this is a symmetric form but we have this is not a complete symmetric form for that we need to use a uh, direction cosines to finalize these answers So when we are considering this, we have written this according to this parametric equation. We can directly arrange this and use this parametric equation. But here, when we are considering about the symmetric form, we need to use the direction cosine. Well, we need to divide these terms x minus x1 and y minus y1 and z minus z1 by their respective direction cosines uh, we have already learned about direction cosine direction cosines are the cosine angles or cosines of angles which the line makes with different axes the cos alpha normally we used cos alpha term to denote the angle between the line and the x-axis Likewise, we use cos beta for denoting the angle between y-axis and that line. And we use cos gamma to denote the angle between z-axis and that line. So, when we are considering this, actually we need to divide it by whole thing, which simply means, we actually we need to find the direction angle of this this whole vector so uh, i have already mentioned in the previous video when you knew the direction vector x2 y2 z2 you can find the direction cosine by dividing that value by root of x2 squared plus y2 squared plus z2 squared likewise you can find the direction cosine of y axis which simply means cos beta and you can find the find for cos gamma 2 value of cos gamma 2 after that you need to divide it by whole equation so we are going to get x2 squared plus y2 squared plus z2 squared over here likewise for y2 also we are going to divide it by this term and that also we are going to divide it by 
this time so this is the full form of symmetric form you can't leave it like x2 y2 z2 you need to show this also because the symmetric form simply means we need to write the equation with its direction cosines also there is another form cartesian form for that we need to write it like this so here i'm going to write it's going to be x minus x1 over x2 minus x1 and here it's going to be y minus y1 over y2 minus y1 like here z minus z1 it's so with that 2 minus that one the main thing over here is this x2 y2 z2 are not these direction vector these are another points in that vector let's say it's this is a line then x y z are random points over here and x1 y1 z1 they have given a point x1 y1 z1 and there is another point they are given x2 y2 z2 for that you can write this formula directly which simply means this is simply denoted by this however they have given that x2 y2 z2 are direction vector of this which simply means this x2 and this x2 are not same we can directly find this one let's say this is x3 over here so we can directly tell that x3 is going to be equals to x2 minus x1 when we are finding the direction vector we can directly deduct this x x the coordinate of this vector from this one if we deduct it we are going to find that direction vector but here they have given the point so we can directly like that x2 minus x1 but here we have already given the direction vector so we can directly like x3 by 3 z3 so these are the simple things you can easily figure it out so in the third section we have learned about this after that in the fourth section we have learned something about plane of vectors or how to denote the equation how to derive the equation for planes so there also we have learned two main things before that i am going to write what's the basic equation or general equation of a plane so when we are considering the general equation of a plane it's going to like let's say they have given the points they have given a point x1 y1 z1 in that plane and we are going to use x minus x1 into a1 plus y minus y1 into a2 plus z minus z1 into a3 is going to be zero so this is the general equation of a plane so here we need to know the what is mean by this a1 a2 a3 is this is the direction of vector which simply means the a1 a2 a3 are the direction vector which is normal to this plane so that's the thing you need to remember a1 a2 a3 are the direction vector if they have given the direction vector and the point you can write the equation like this direct so if we simplify this we are going to get another equation ax plus by plus cz plus e is equal to d as we all know if we knew the value for this if we know the value for this x1 by 1 z1 as these are the points we can directly multiply this x1 a1 by 1 a2 and z1 a3 and simplify this and write it like this but however we actually don't know what's the value of x because we can substitute any value for this x so we can get that get this one so here the thing is the direct you can find the normal vector to that plane using this formula is going to be a b c over here the direction vector the normal direction vector of this plane which means if this is a plane the normal direction vector is going to be perpendicular to this plane so that's the thing so this is the section you have learnt in that also this is a general form of this plane equation so after that we have learnt about something called vector form of a plane 
for that when you are considering a vector form of a plane you need to know it's going to be r vector this r vector simply means the direction vector or the normal vector to that plane r vector i'm going to like this like r vector into into dot product into any point let's say this is going to be a b c it's going to be t so you need to find the value of d but if they give the values directly a b c any point any coordinates of a point in that plane and the normal vector to that plane you can directly like this equation and find do the dot product and find the value of t so this is the another main thing you need to know this is known as vector equation after that we learned about how to find the direction how to find the angle between any two planes so these are the main things over you have learned in these sections so all together this vector is having these simple things however you need to practice some other questions to do it faster so in this course we have also provided that hope you will enjoy this if you have any doubts please comment it below thank you